Okay, I'm going to do just a few more examples from this worksheet, um, some of these challenge problems. So let's look at number 20 and 23. So here we go. Notice it's already set equal to zero. So I know this has maybe freaked out a couple of you because it's x to the third, but remember my first rule of factoring, always look to see what's common. Notice they all have at least one x, and three will go into all of these numbers. So right out here in the front, I'm gonna factor out what they have in common. So notice that's gonna leave me an x squared plus seven x, because notice three times seven gives me 21. X times x is gonna give me the x squared. And let's see, three will go into 36, what, 12 times? And notice 3x times 12 is 36x, and that equals 0. Now it should be easy to factor. You don't want to throw this 3x away, but I'm looking for two things that multiply together to give me this. So x times x is x squared. Can you think of factors of 12 that add up to 7? Absolutely. What, 4 and 3? Okay, notice I've got three factors, 1, 2, and 3, that involve an x all three of them have the potential to equal zero, okay? Because remember, zero times anything is going to give you zero. So this guy can equal zero, or this guy could equal zero. That's what I get for looking through a screen. Or this factor, which is x plus three, could equal zero. So if you saw this, divide both sides by three, you can see zero divided by three is zero. So one answer is zero. Move your four to the other side, that's gonna give you a negative four. Here, if you move the three to the other side, you're gonna get a negative three. Now, this is the way it typically happens. I'm not gonna say always, because sometimes you get the same factor, therefore you get the same answer. But if you have an x to the third, you're gonna have one, two, three answers. So think about this, this one's an x to the fourth, so we're probably gonna get four answers. So there's nothing here in common, and it already equals zero, but, this is not bad, because look at this. x squared times x squared is going to give me x to the fourth. Okay, and I need an x squared in the middle, so it looks like it's going to work. Can you think of factors of negative 4 that add up to 3? And I would say yes, it could be a 4 and a negative 1. That's a negative 4, but yet when I add them, I get a positive 3. Now, we can't factor this one any further, okay? It's called the sum of two perfect squares. And you know what, unless they're doing, I don't think they're doing complex numbers. I'm looking real quick. Nope, we're okay. But this one can be factored. It's the difference of squares. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this down. Everybody see there's no way this one will ever equal zero no matter what you put in there. But this one I can factor as x plus two, excuse me, x plus one, x minus one. Set each of these factors equal to zero. This one will never equal zero. You can't do anything with it but you're gonna get x equals negative one or positive one. Because think about it, if you put a one in there, one minus one is indeed zero, okay? So that should do it.